After a seven hour flight and a five hour long drive, I'm finally right here in the Australian outback. Here are some highlights from my trip down under. I know I've been gone a while, but I'm back to vlog about my recent trip to Australia. I've been herping across the country, getting a first-hand experience at the growing reptile pet hobby and doing some great sightseeing. But first, I had to get on a flight out of Singapore to meet up with Max Jackson from Australian Wildlife Encounters. I interviewed Max at his beautiful home before our tour started to hear more about what he and AWE does while discussing the reptile pet hobby in Australia. We offer Australia-wide tours um, targeting reptiles, birds, mammals, all kinds of, kind of wildlife. Um, and then we also offer venomous snake handling courses as well. So we teach all the local snake catchers, all of the local wildlife authorities, we teach them how to handle snakes, um, as well as keepers that are looking at getting into venomous keeping, we teach them how to handle their venomous snakes too. In Australia, the reptile pet hobby doesn't face as much stigma as it does back home. There are regulations in place that allows keepers to get a license from authorities to keep some of their native reptiles as pets. I had a chance to film and interact with some of Max's captive bred animals and get a look at some Woma python eggs he was incubating. Here we got some Woma python eggs from that girl that we saw earlier. So she just laid them a couple of days ago. We've got nine healthy eggs in here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this one here is just a bit of a slug, which probably won't amount to anything, but you know, all those have been nice and good. Nice. So what substrate are you using for uh, This is actually just vermiculite. So it's just uh, something that you use for potting mix, but it holds water really well. Um, yeah, you kind of just get to a point where if you get a handful and squeeze hard, you might just get a drop out, otherwise. So I read that um, when the snakes have really laid their eggs, you shouldn't like try to move them around. No. Because you might end up killing the, the embryo inside. Is that, is that, is that That's right? That's definitely right. So they don't need to stay at the same orientation. So these were, this is exactly how she laid them. And then they were just individually picked up right. and popped down, keeping right. that same orientation. So if they turn around, they basically put like a little bubble inside the egg. Right. And it can turn, as the egg turns around, that bubble will move through the egg and then get um, like break blood vessels or break the developing embryo and okay. can lead to a variety of kind of, yeah. Oh, okay. And you have to be an incubator. You won't get them out at room temperature, I guess. No, no, it's too, yeah, too inconsistent, like so yeah. cold today, but um, yeah, it needs to be an incubator. Or I could leave them with mum. <laughs> so in the wild, is it like um, in the burrows? You leave them in the burrows? Yeah. yeah, and in the wild, mum will kind of incubate them. So she'll go out, get some heat, come back and curl oh, up right. over them. And then, yeah, if there's not much sun or if it's a cloudy day, then she'll just wrap around them and shiver. Oh. And shivering motion will create a bit of friction and that will warm them up. Well, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. This is quite cool. In Singapore, you'd probably be looking at a hefty fine and some jail time if you're caught with a snake or lizard as a pet at home. I shared with Max about my own experiences and he was surprised at the stigma against captive bred reptiles. Uh, I think that reptiles are a very easy pet to keep. Um, they are quite simplistic, um, but they do require a lot of attention. So there is a bit of a stigma as well about people are keeping pets um, in general, whether it be reptiles or other animals, about that these animals belong in the wild. Um, and definitely they do, and they shouldn't be taken out of the wild. But there's a captive trade of pets available now, and by accessing that captive trade, what you're doing is you're kind of encouraging people to learn about wild species, which can only really help them in nature. If someone's got a pet worm or python, and then they feel that they hear that worm and pythons are endangered and they need conserving, all of a sudden they've got an emotional attachment to this wild species that then they can support. So I think keeping pet reptiles in captivity has got a massive conservation value for the wild ones as well just by inspiring that generation. As a former lizard keeper myself, I resonated with what Max said, as having bearded dragons really did inspire me to travel all the way here to see some of these iconic reptiles in the wild. I'll be posting my full interview with Max on my YouTube channel. But for now, I'm going to finish up filming some of his collection before heading out. I just spent the entire afternoon at Max from Australian Wildlife Encounters, who was showing me all his cool snakes in his snake room. 
So now that we're done with that, we're gonna be off looking for some wild herbs. Yeah, for sure. We've seen the captive ones, let's go see some wild ones. Damn right. All right, see y'all soon. <laughs> it's been a wholesome start for me on my tour of Australia. Being reunited with the reptile pet hobby again, and speaking with Max, as well as other Australians, have reminded me of how passionate I am about the reptile pet hobby and all the good that can come from it. On the next episode of Dragon Tales, me and Max will be out herping along the Sunshine Coast into the Brigolo Belt for a couple days. So look out for that video when it drops. Bye!